Welcome back to On The Ground. I am Shannon. Um, so, um, I was going to install the battery on the Honda Ortrax 300 and the uh, uh, solenoid uh, today, but it's raining. Yep, earlier this week I checked the forecast and it's supposed to be sunny Saturday and Sunday. It's Saturday and it's raining. So, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing that today. But, uh, also I need to charge the new battery. So, I need to order a battery charger. So, I did. Should be here tomorrow. Um, also found out that uh, the grips, I ordered some grips. And uh, they were supposed to be here yesterday, and I kept checking on them periodically. I come here on my break and stuff, but uh, it always said I checked the tracking. It was, uh, you know, in route or whatever on its way. Come to find out, it didn't show up. So I check check the tracking and shipping progress, and it said that. Uh, it was returning back to the sender and uh, said that uh, that the, the receiver moved and changed the address or didn't leave no address so apparently uh, the uh, UPS got something went wrong there um, I ordered several parts from the same place different orders they all came here, no issues, but something happened with that order, so I don't know what happened, but uh, they got it wrong somewhere. I tried contacting UPS by phone. It's all automated, uh, so it just didn't work out that way, so uh, maybe Monday or something I'll contact Partzilla, that's who it was, and uh, see if... Uh, See if uh, we can get that sorted out. Have them send it back. But yeah, uh, apparently UPS uh, got something wrong. I don't know what, but they got something wrong. But uh, I'm still here. They just messed up. But um, so let's see what we're going to do. So tomorrow, um, hopefully. This battery will, won't take too long to charge, and uh, I'll be able to video record it um, in the relay. I, I might install it if it's not, if it stops raining. It's supposed to be on and off, I think, today for the most part. I think there's thunderstorms coming too. Um, I'm kind of cleaning my apartment today. I got. Gotta take care of that. I need clean in here too. But uh, I wanted to make a video. Again, I'm kind of waking up. I'm okay. I'm a little tired, but it's okay. So that's that's the current update. Uh, it's supposed to rain. According to the current forecast, it's supposed to rain next weekend too. So I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, it changes, but. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, it's it's not too big of a deal. But you know, yeah, I can't control the weather. Um, so, uh, and I have to work, and it's kind of hard for me to get out and do things before work. Uh, I might try to do it before work. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah. yesterday wasn't too bad. Didn't get but like six hours in of work uh i guess they some of them people they want to leave early but uh it wasn't too much hard work uh, yesterday too many hours but you know it's not a real big deal um so what do we want to talk about i'm, I'm thinking about getting a pressure washer uh both for the, the full wheeler and for my truck. Uh, I don't have one and I, I kind of need something I believe with more pr 
pressure and just a regular water hose. Um, so might, I might look at some of those. Uh, I've been looking at uh, some steel ones, just the electric ones, but I might look to see about the gas power, but they kind of get pricey. Uh, I seen that they had some um, at uh, the, at work. They had some gas powered ones from Dewalt. Uh, they look pretty nice, but I don't I don't know how much they cost. Um, I forgot what what size they were. I think this is not hundred percent sure what size they were. This might be it. Kind of looks like it. Yeah, $1,400. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, I think that's the one. It's a little out of my price. I mean, it's not out of my price range, but I don't want to pay, pay that much. Uh, I'd like to have one with that much pressure. Might look on Marketplace if I can find one. Um, we'll see. But, um, so, yeah. I don't give a, I can't re really do much out there. Uh, I don't know. Still got some of parts just sitting right here. Uh, I just, just want to talk about something. Oh, I know what I'll, uh, I will talk about this, you know. Uh, I'm from southern West Virginia, but I live in Wisconsin, okay? I don't think I've talked about this too much. You know, here and there, I've touched on it a little bit. But, um, I'm from southern West Virginia, uh, the mountain state. There's a lot of hills and stuff there. Uh, let me see if I can get a picture on here. People don't always know, and it may show up. Uh, I'm from Logan County, from Boone County, because uh, uh, part of where I live was like right on the line. Uh, I lived in a place called Hewitt Creek Lake. I lived in a place called Logan. I lived in a place called Man in around the area. It's not a very big area, but. Uh, a lot of people, they think, you know, I got the accent, and they think of hillbillies, and uh, maybe some people know about the coal mines there, uh, which has a big part of the history there for the last hundred and some years. Um, but um, they think of hillbillies, and moonshine, and uh, things like that. They say things like, I uh, oh, don't they marry the cut your your cousins down there? Don't you marry cousins and disrespectful things? And uh, they think that people from Southern West Virginia are uh, racist or you know stuff like that. And you know people, I've had people that, uh, that I've met that didn't even know West Virginia is was a state. Uh, and I'm serious that, you know, but, you know, uh, people ask, are there any mountains there? Uh, so my understanding is a lot of people don't really know the history of Southern West Virginia. And maybe a lot of people don't take the time or have the curiosity, but they're not racist. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no history of the Ku Klux Klan ever being in Southern West Virginia, okay? Uh, hillbillies, uh, the, the term is misleading, but there are a lot of mountains, hills. They aren't the Rockies, so they're not as big as the Rockies, but just about the whole state uh, is covered in mountains, Appalachian Mountains. Uh, it is a mountain range. It is the oldest mountain range in uh, North America. 
at least. I don't know about in the whole world, but it is in uh, North America. Uh, the, uh, the main source of revenue, uh, the backbone of the economy there, is the coal mining industry, okay? There's a lot of coal there. Um, it's been mined there since the early 1900s, maybe the late 1800s. Uh, but, uh, and where I'm from, more specifically, is the coal field area. Uh, you got uh, a lot of coal mines on eastern Kentucky, southwestern part of uh, West Virginia, Logan, Boone, Mingo counties. And they're in other parts of the uh, state as well, but there's that's where the, the majority of them are. Uh, all throughout the state, you've got a lot of old coal towns, abandoned coal towns, uh, very poor counties, no jobs hardly, uh, which is one of the main reasons why I don't live there no more. There's just, there aren't any jobs. There's not much of an economy left. Where I'm from, in Logan and Boone County, uh, there are some still active mines. So, for the most part, where I'm from, that is uh, uh, kind of like the last place with a little bit of an economy. Low population, hardly any jobs, hard to find jobs, and uh, since the 90s, uh, since maybe the late 90s, early 2000s, you've had a lot of mines kind of shut down. I remember on one occasion, before I, I, I also used to be a former over-the-road truck driver, so I got my CDLs um, and drove a truck cross-country. But just prior to that, uh, me and my friend Bob, we went to literally like 30 different mines sites and we could not get a job at any of them uh, we did have one interview and we had what we needed to get in the mines uh, but i mean we we're going to mines and watching miners walk out of the mines and talking to the foreman trying to get a job and he told them that uh this was the, these guys that were just coming out their last day because they were all being laid off. So we literally, all throughout the state, we drove to places it was kind of impractical for us to even drive to work trying to get a job. Could not get a job. Had one interview, there's only six positions available, and the only reason I didn't get is because I'm not married and I didn't have kids. So I had to pursue other options. So getting a job there is very difficult. And the jobs that do exist there, well, they're occupied. And if you can find a job now, it's not going to pay enough to, to feed a family. It, it's really not enough for one person. And uh, if, you, if you're in the mines, if you're working in the mines, it, because they open and close and open and close. Uh, so the mines there... Um, Having a job in the mines may only last three to five years and then you're laid off again. And then these coal companies try to find places to sell coal to get contracts to other countries because the United States, uh, the, the coal that's mined in southern West Virginia is anthracite coal. It's mainly used in coal plants. And the coal plants that, like in the 90s and stuff, that where all this coal was mined and, and, and sent to um, these coal plants that use coal, uh, they, you know, they quit purchasing coal. They switched to natural gas. And uh, so the demand of coal went down dramatically. Uh, basically, every person I went to high school with has moved out of the state, except for a select few. Uh, I don't know what the current population is in the city of Man, but it was like 700 to 1,000 people. That's it. 
I don't know about Logan, and I don't know about Chattanooga. Uh, but you got some very poor counties and poor towns in, all throughout the state. I mean, there are places that just look horrible, completely abandoned, completely um, just almost uninhabitable. They're in, is it McDowell County? Uh, or Raleigh County? I mean, they had a Walmart, Walmart packed up and left. I mean, you know, you don't see that too often with Walmart, but you know, it's just, uh, it's like that in a lot of places. And that's what happens when they're no longer mining coal in an area, there's no other jobs, there's nothing. There's no kind of economy. And so, I don't know if West Virginia is the poorest state, but I, I think it, I think it is now. Uh, but the, the thing is, there, and a lot of the, the communities there uh, were created in like the 20s, uh, these coal camps that were created to house coal miners and their families. Uh, back then, they, uh, way back then, uh, they didn't even pay miners with money. They paid them with what they call script. And you could only use it at the coal company's stores. You know, they, they only paid the, their miners with script and they could only use it in the, their stores. And they pretty much controlled everything. They had control over every, everything. There was no other sources of stores or anything. They controlled everything. And, uh, but back then, the mines were very dangerous to work in. Not like today, it's nowhere near as dangerous. It's still a serious job, and there still are risks and hazards. And you, there, you know, they are, there's still danger there. It's not like working at a factory or Walmart or a bank. You can lose your life, and people can get hurt and killed. But it's not as bad as it used to be, uh, because you know, uh, there's a there's an agency called MSHA. It's like OSHA, but it's for the mines. And, you know, there's a lot of regulations and a lot of requirements nowadays uh, that have a lot to do with safety. So it's nowhere near as dangerous, which again is why you don't hear too much about injuries or fatalities or mine explosions and stuff. But anyways, back in the early 20s, you know, uh, you know, they didn't pay him money. They paid him script. And, and this is a lot to do with the history of where I come from and how it was established and what occurred and its modernization to, to the current day. Uh, there's, a, there, there's still infrastructure there and there's still plenty of houses there, but it doesn't mean that it reflects the population because maybe a lot of those houses people don't even live in. And the one that nice houses, I don't know what they're valued at market-wise, but, you know, what people may have not been able to afford in the 90s, uh, you know, only mine foremans and people, you know, had a good source of income could afford those houses. But nowadays, those people may have moved out, uh, out of the state or out of the area mainly out of the state uh, but uh, you know so those houses become more affordable for the people that are currently working in the mines uh, I don't know what their annual salary is now it used to be a gross of like 84000 was the average coal miner but uh, like I said the town of Man is only like 700,000 people so now I'll tell you something but maybe in the 90s it was quite a bit more but you know people didn't have a choice but to move away because uh, there's just there's not enough jobs and there's the jobs that are there are hard to get because the people that's got them is not going to just give them up and there's either a brother or sister or uncle or somebody they know that if, if a position becomes available they get it and uh, so, 
if you don't have those kind of connections, the chances of you even having the opportunity of getting a job is very, very small and slim. But anyways, so back in the day, they paid in script, and the people, the, the coal miners, uh, kind of got fed up with this. And the coal companies controlling everything, and so many people were dying in the mines that according to uh, documents and, uh, and archives and stuff, uh, more people were dying in the mines, in the coal mines, than in World War I. That's how bad it was. And uh, so the coal miners, you know, they didn't want to, to work under these conditions and so if they didn't work in the mines, they displaced, they kicked them out of their houses because they, they all belonged to the coal companies. So they had to go out and live in tent camps, in tents. And uh, so the miners, they formed a union. They unionized. Okay. Well, the coal companies and the po corporate politicians, they didn't want this to happen. So they sent in their own uh, army or, you know, police force, militia, whatever, to try to break them up, to keep them from, you know, assembling themselves, forming a union. They literally sent armed militias or, you know, uh, armies uh, to go in and deliberately and physically and literally keep them from uh, gathering into groups. And uh, you can you can look into the history of what happened in May 1, West Virginia, Mingo County, and you can look at the Battle of Blair Mountain, which is very, where I, I used to ride my four-wheeler, my ATV, on Blair Mountain. It was very close. I mean, I could leave my grandmother's house where I lived at prior to moving to Wisconsin. And I could ride up the holler, ride up another holler on a full wheeler trail up into the mountains, to the ridge of the mountain. And I could ride all the way from there out to Blair Mountain. I went out there plenty of times. And this, there's a big battle between these united or unionized mine workers and this army that was formed uh, you know, armed gunmen uh, from Logan County uh, by the sheriff there. And, uh, uh, you know, to, to fight against these uh, miners that unionized. And, uh, and see, the, the, these, these union mine workers, uh, to distinguish themselves from foe, they, they tied red bandanas around their neck and and they were called rednecks. That's where the term redneck come from. Uh, and, you know, they were called the redneck army. Despite what you may have learned or heard elsewhere, that's where redneck really come from. You know, and this is the, the, the history behind it. This is the origins of the name redneck, okay? Uh, so, um, rednecks, they, they rebelled against the corporate politicians and the coal companies, you know, but not without good cause. I mean, people were dying, they were controlling everything, they didn't want to have money, you know, uh, they were doing them wrong. See, immigrants, when they came into this country, they sent them there. So a lot of them, the, the miners were immigrants from other countries like Ireland and stuff, which I'm Irish and Cherokee Indian. Cherokee Indians also used to uh, inhabit these Appalachian mountains and stuff. Uh, also black people, uh, former slaves, uh, went here to work, to earn a living. And white people and black people, and whether they're Italian or uh, Irish, they all, and black people were also a part of this redneck army because they all unionized. People just don't know the history of Southern West Virginia. People there aren't racist and discriminate like 
like maybe in the deep south in states like Mississippi, Alabama, parts of Georgia, Louisiana, you know, where you had plantations. You didn't really have any plantations in West Virginia. I think in the northern part of the state there was a few, but it greatly paled in comparison. And uh, it, it just, it is not like people think. But, uh, I mean, I, I was never raised that way. Never seen any kind of Ku Klux Klan or whatever. It, that's just not the way it is there. Point blank. And we are, or, you know, ancestors or, you know, uh, the rednecks came from where I'm from. Okay? In that area. Uh, so, and they fought this battle on the way around, which is in very close proximity where I live. So, you know, we're the real rednecks. And we're, but we're not done, racist. You know, you can look into it yourself and learn the, uh, what happened in the Battle of Mate Juan, the Battle of Lair Mountain, and, you know, and you can get the more specific details. But, you know, that's part of the history of uh, Southern West Virginia, where I come from. Um, yeah, there were moonshiners before my day, like my grandmother's. Father, he made moonshine, you know, the way hillbillies lived off the land. They made everything themselves. Yeah, you know, this is that area. But, uh, and in eastern parts of Kentucky, you know, and that's part of our, uh, our history. But uh, if you look into what happened leading up to why West Virginia separated from Virginia, then you'll understand that, uh, the people that lived there didn't want to deal with plantation owners and corrupt politicians and all that. They fled to the mountains to dwell and live there. So you had those people and plus all these immigrants coming there. And supposed to be promised a better life, but then they end up living uh, in coal towns and having to work in dangerous, harsh conditions and you know, if you really do your research, you'll learn into West Virginia and Southern West Virginia more specifically. You'll find that this is, in fact, the way it really is and really was. Uh, nowadays, you see, like, the Hatfield-McCoy trails and all this, and I rode them plenty, but I rode on them before they were ever designated as the Hatfield-McCoy trails. And plus, there's the history of the Hatfields and McCoys in uh in this region, in this area, so, but uh, I'm trying to find a picture of more like what it's like. You can see the mountains a little bit if you can see there clearly enough. Um, this is a that's not the picture I'm looking for. Um, let me just type in mountain. Yes, there's plenty of mountains as far as the eyes can see. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's the norm. That's norm there. Normal. But, uh, yeah, I'm just not seeing. Uh, let me see. For a big picture to give you a, a good idea of just how many mountains there are, how far they all go. Uh, I mean, that kind of gives you a general idea of the Appalachian Mountains. But, um, um, yeah, back where I'm from, um, trying to see, just isn't too many big pictures. This is the city of Logan, okay? You know, there's a lot of stores in there. There's not much going on, but there are some, some relatively new structures, but a lot of this was built years ago, and it's just kind of been some upkeep to it. But uh, as you can see, people live on, on the hills and what have you. I've rode all around these mountains and stuff on four wheelers. But uh, there's just not much of economy in, in, in this area. Uh, is still kind of moving, you know, because there's still 
coal, once you take the coal mines away, there's nothing. Everything else will suffer. But it's one of the last places there that's still, you know, hanging on. But if you ever look at some of the videos and some of the history and some of these old coal towns, like here's one uh, from, I don't know when it was, uh, Cherry Tree, that's not far from right in the center of uh, Logan, West Virginia. But, uh, let's see here. But, uh, yeah, um, that's where I come from. And, uh, quite a bit of history there. A lot of it's about the, the, the coal mines and the coal towns and the history. Uh, drugs have become real bad there, but that's typical with Places where there's no jobs, it's very depressing. Um, but stuff like that. Um, but uh, you know, I grew up there in the '90s, and it wasn't that bad then. The, the economy was moving, but uh, not that much anymore. Uh, it's just the way it is. But uh, you know, it's hard leaving the place you you you. Uh, you grew up and you lived and stuff, but you know, it's like, it's hard to go there and it's hard to leave, but you know you can't stay. So, but, uh, you know, a lot of people have had to move. A lot of people move to places, states like North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. Uh, we didn't have a choice. We didn't really have a choice. People stay there, but getting a job there, and if you do get a job there, you don't know how long it's going to last. And if you have a house there, trying to sell it, maybe you know you might not be able to sell it, so you won't have the money from that. So, but uh, it's a beautiful place as far as like the mountains and the rivers and the streams, but there's there's no economy there. You can't make a living. You can't live there. I mean, I don't know how much the cost of living is, but I don't think it's that expensive. Not nowadays, but it's hard to tell. Uh, but I still have kindred there, you know. But uh, a lot of the, the houses there, they were built by the coal companies, and they just kind of either added rooms on and put new siding on. But... Uh, that's just the way it is. But that's where I'm from. Um, and it seems like I'm going to touch on another part of the history there. There's plenty of uh, ATV trails, or rugged ATV trails, uh, up in McCoy. Pretty rugged terrain trails. Uh, in general, idea of how <laughs> technical they are. But that's where I come from. Uh, spend a lot of time in the mountains. A lot of people live there. Spend a lot of time in the mountains against hillbillies, but. We do. This is what we signed up for. Yeah, it's pretty rough there. It's not flat. This is awesome. I've been riding in the mountains since I was a kid before I moved up here. So, but uh, yeah, so so I know Honda ATVs. I can handle it. They're they're tough. A lot of people there have had Hondas because you need something with low center gravity to climb a lot of these steep hills and some of these. With a lot of ground clearance, it'll keep you from hitting stuff. But in my experience, you need a low center of gravity because some of these hills are pretty steep, and you don't want it to roll over. Because if you're up near the top of the mountain and it rolls over and goes over the hill, it's going to keep rolling until it gets wrapped around a tree or something, and uh, it, it, it's no good then. It's in pieces or a broken half or wrapped around a tree and. It's just being all out of shape. Yeah. I lived there a long 
time. I've uh, seen it happen many times. Uh, so if you ever go riding at the Hatfield McCoy trails, uh, don't, if you're not used to riding in that type of area, don't go in there thinking you're going to ride full speed and do what you want. At least until you've been there a while and you get familiar with the area because you may be going one direction and someone else coming from another direction and you hit a sharp turn. I've seen people collide. One person has to go over the hill to avoid the other. And uh, I, I remember when I lived there and I was first riding along, I seen them driving fa riding fast. I said, you all ain't from here. Because <laughs> uh, some of them turns, they just do like this and it's just over the mountainside and it's steep. They might not be big mountains, but they're pretty steep. In some areas, they're real steep. Uh, in some places, it's a cliff and it's not worth it. I, 25, I wouldn't go above 55 even in in the longest stretches, the flattest areas. Uh, it's just it's too dangerous for that. It's just not wise to do that. Ain't, ain't no reason to, to prove how tough you are and get seriously injured or hurt yourself or get killed or kill somebody else. Uh, so, not to scare you, not to intimidate you, but just nice areas to ride uh, but if you do don't go there be careful uh, take your time get familiar with the areas uh, stay with you know ride within your skill level and uh, just don't you know it's not worth it's not worth getting hurt or tearing your machine up or or injuring somebody else uh, it happens you can even watch youtube videos of the Hatfield McCoy trails in West Virginia of what kind of terrain it's like you know you just can't really go that fast uh, safely you can try but you know I, I gave you a fair warning so rode on rode in the mountains for many many years I've seen a lot of stuff but, uh, so, yeah, West Virginia, a lot of people, they don't know the true history of it. Uh, you know, they, they, sometimes people have a, they think of us as kind of ignorant or lack intelligence and stuff, but listen to what they think they know about West Virginia just shows how ignorant they are of the actual truth and the facts. They don't know what they think they know. But, uh, yeah, uh, and, and you may have heard about the whites in Boone County. Those, those people don't really reflect the majority of people or everybody there. Uh, but it, it is uh, rugged terrain, a lot of history in the coal mines, coal mines. And rednecks, or the real rednecks history's proven it and I've told you what the background history of it and white people and black people we we were in the same mix okay it wasn't very segregated back when white people first moved there some but wasn't the same you know uh, you know because we worked like slaves in a lot of ways it's hard work it's harder than picking cotton in a cotton field not to take anything, any abuse that was uh, inflicted upon slaves. I think that we was all wrong about the way they were treated. Uh, but uh, we were treated pretty bad too. But, uh, so uh, that'll probably conclude it for this episode of On the Ground. Um, uh, again, I want to give thanks to God for another day. I have a testimony of uh, Jesus Christ you know, as my Lord and Savior. Um, I try to read the Bible every day, scripture every day. If you have not believed in the gospel, which is the good news that God offers you forgiveness if you've sinned, and uh, that you can be saved if you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. So, never been saved and baptized repent believe in the gospel 
receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and God's grace and mercy. Because he will forgive you. No matter what you think you've done, God will forgive you. He's God. He can handle it. He understands. He's a forgiving God. doesn't matter what the devil says. You've never done anything too bad that the blood of Jesus Christ can't cover. Okay? Jesus paid the price. God will honor his sacrifice and he will forgive your sins. Okay? All you have to do is believe it. All you have to do is accept it. That's the truth. That's the gospel. Good news. And it applies to everyone. Repent and believe the gospel. If Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, because all of sin, you can look the world ten times over, and you will not find someone who has never sinned against God. No matter how hard you try. Uh, but uh, Jesus died for the sins of the world. That includes everybody. So everybody needs him. Okay? And uh, so whoever believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in their heart, confess with their mouth, God says they shall be saved. So, repent and believe in the gospel that you may be saved. So I'm going to leave off on that note, and I'll see you again here on On the Ground.